Divine Truth Feedback Jesus, Mary and others give personal or group feedback to people who have asked for personal assistance. Thomas Rees, a man who is very sincere about his desire for God, but who still feels blocked towards feeling his emotions after studying Divine Truth teachings for over three years, asks for practical advice via email, recorded on the 30th of September 2015 in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Hi everyone, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here with Jesus today and we're going to be responding to a letter, an email that we received in our FAQ account by a man called Thomas Rees. Uh, so we'll make a few comments and then we'll get into reading his letter and responding to his questions. So this is a part of our new feedback sessions that we're doing just to give people personal feedback about how, you know, some of the questions I've asked about their personal lives. and. Uh, as I said to you earlier, I feel that Thomas's letter, and uh, he sent two letters actually, one, one was this one, um, they were some of the most sincere letters that I've read for probably the last three or four months, <laughs> <laughs> which, which is, means in amongst quite a few hundred letters, this is one of the most sincere letters that I've actually read. Yeah. It's interesting with a lot of letters, um, when we read the letter, we feel a very large discrepancy between the person's true emotional state and condition and then and what they're saying the to us. The words they're saying. The yeah. words they're saying. And with, in Thomas's case, there is, it's almost an exact correlation between what he's saying mm -hmm. and how he's feeling. Yeah. And this is a wonderful thing. So I first must compliment you, Thomas, if you're w watching this by hopefully, by the time you... <laughs> hopefully you haven't, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, given, haven't up given up. Haven't given up altogether June. By the, yeah. <laughs> since June. But uh, I must compliment you of your sincerity because it, it is a very wonderful thing to get a person and, and have their letter mirror almost completely what we feel from them as an individual and oh. it's a and actually it's a very good compliment to you in a way because it means that um, there is there's no uh, facade or deceit in what you're trying to in, in, convey when you've written your letter to us yeah. and we feel very attracted to that so that's so, a yeah, looking forward to getting to know you a bit in the future yeah, yeah. So okay, so what? How we approach this? Probably we'll just read yes. portions of the letter. Yes, might, might as well read the whole letter in this case because it's quite it's one page long. Quite succinct, yeah. And we'll discuss each thing se section by section for him. Yeah, yeah. So do you want me to read, and then you can respond? Yeah, you, you, um, you, well, maybe we could read paragraph about yeah, or something. Let's do mm. that. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> you want to start? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so Thomas says, "Hi." My question is this, I'm trained as a marriage and family therapist and worked as a therapist for 12 years. I myself have been in therapy probably half a dozen times in my life. Like you, like you state in your teachings, you cannot have intellectual healing. I need to identify and feel things before I have any chance of shifting and progressing. The reality is that I've been stagnant unaware and clueless my entire life. Though I desire to follow the divine love path, I know at best I follow maybe the natural love path. <laughs> yes, now, uh, Thomas, yeah, a lot of what you're saying here, definitely true. Like I, I understand your life and that you've been a therapist and also had therapy yourself, which is wonderful because a lot of therapists don't have enough therapy themselves <laughs> um, and often are acting out their lack of development emotionally on you know, on their, their clients, unfortunately, yeah. in their therapy sessions. And he is dead right when he comes to saying that we, you can't have an intellectual healing. That is definitely correct. And mm -hmm. what he's obviously seen in his own life with therapy is that is definitely the case. And it's wonderful that he can see that. Mm. Then he starts to get into a little bit of self-judgment yeah. <laughs> where he starts going, the reality of, is that I have been stagnant, unaware and clueless my entire life. To be frank with you, Thomas, I don't feel that's the case. Um, you, have, you, you have gone through, I don't know if you saw the uh, last year assistance groups in Australia, but you have gone through a process which I would have classified as um, a process where you've gone through all of the intellectual awarenesses that mm -hmm. I pointed out in the, I think it was in the discussion about the facade self. Deconstructing, Deconstructing the facade, the facade yep. self. So, so now, as a result of that, you have very little facade 
in your interactions with other people. And even in your interactions in your letter here, there is very little facade. And this is a wonderful thing. The average person never gets through their facade for their entire life. So, so you have made quite a lot of progress, even though you still feel stagnant and perhaps unaware. And I understand now that what you're really feeling is stagnant and unaware from an emotional perspective mm. rather than intellectual one. Because intellectually, everything you've said in your letter is pretty much spot on as to what we feel from you. So, so this is a great sign that you've worked your way through a lot of the facade and you're now l looking more sincerely at addressing the issues relating to the you know the real self and the hurt self which is yeah. what he's really wanting to get into yeah so i think yeah i think it's wonderful <laughs> then he gets a bit hard on himself <laughs> saying I, I may be at best follow the natural love part <laughs> i feel that process while it is uh, the first phase of becoming fully aware from a soul perspective that he ha actually has done quite a lot of work when most people meet yes. us they are almost totally in their facade and it's very, very rare to find a person actually who has worked through even a small portion of their facade mm -hmm. when they meet us. And, um, and Thomas is one of those persons. And yeah. so he's obviously done a lot of work, even if he thinks it is intellectual work. But the reality is I know that he has also done quite a lot of emotional work in his life where he has been able to connect to specific things in his emotional life. And so, yeah, I feel he's definitely firmly on the natural love path, not maybe. <laughs> and obviously this next shift is the important shift that needs to be made from, from this intellectual awareness that he's now in into the beginnings of the emotional process, yeah. which, which is a very difficult shift. It's a big step, isn't it? Yeah. But, and I like that you've given Thomas the feedback and anyone really watching that, that working through those intellectual steps of deconstructing our facade and growing even intellectual awareness, uh, like a lot, that is work. That's a lot of work and yes. a lot of people, as you said, really s struggle to even make those steps while they're still on earth, don't they? Yeah, and it's interesting the... Uh when we get letters from those people, there is a lot of arrogance generally mm. in those letters and mm. there's a lot of, and a lot of facade obviously, but a lot of arrogance and a lot of belief that they've already done a lot of work and all this kind of stuff when we feel they've barely done anything. Yeah. Whereas we, this is the opposite to what we feel from Thomas's yes. letter. From, Tom, from Thomas, what we can feel is that he has done actually quite a lot of work emotionally and, and while he still is struggling with his connection with God and really working his way through the things that prevent that, um, he has done quite a lot of work breaking down the facade and, and becoming real, like a real person. Yeah. And this, what I love about his letter to us is that he, he, his letter reflects almost perfectly, accurately, what he actually feels. Yeah. And this is, a, like I said at the beginning, very rare mm. for us to have that from somebody. So mm. I just feel I can't say enough about that. <laughs> yeah, it's just so refreshing, isn't it? It is so refreshing, many, yeah. So many people write to us with either they're too afraid to just expose themselves or they, they want an addiction met with us or yep. they, they try to present, uh, you know, all kinds of different facades really don't yes. they yeah and, and, or and they also try to indicate that they know things that they don't yet know even intellectually know mm -hmm. and and then they try to guess about their emotional condition and often they're way off beam because they're not connected emotionally T thomas has a very accurate uh, idea of his emotional mm -hmm. condition and a very accurate uh, accurate awareness of where he's at from an emotional perspective and it's very rare to find such person. Yeah. yeah, and the other thing that I really like that we're about to see in the following paragraphs is that Thomas, he's shown sincerity, he's used his will in this, you know, he's, he is, um, he's really done a lot to try and help himself and try to figure this out before he even emailed us. Yes. You know, he's really showing sincerity. And in the letter this. goes through what he's done. Yes. And so this is wonderful too, yeah. you know, because you know a lot of people don't even bother with any of that no. before they email us they just want a quick answer quick yep. fix he's already done a lot of things in an attempt to try to break through what he's now finding you know is a difficult breakthrough yeah. and that is breakthrough into the emotional process of of you know breaking down the facade and, and entering into the hurt, hurt. hurt self basically yep. and um 
and that and and that means that he, he's very sincere mm. and that's what we feel from you thomas that you're a very sincere person and uh, and that's why we feel very attracted to answer your letters <laughs> even though we've taken a few months to get around to it yeah. partly the reason why is because we only just recently started filming again so <laughs> but yeah. uh we're sorry for the delay, but we just love the fact that, about his sincerity and how sincere he's been in this entire thing. Yeah. Mm. So, so I'll read the next one. Yep. I have followed the teachings of Jesus for the past three plus years. I've been a dutiful student, mm. uh, and I agree he has, <laughs> listening to Jesus for about 10, 20 to 30 minutes a day and taking copious notes. I've written this site before and followed Luli's suggestions. She's the person who handles our office account and listened to videos of Jesus that have been assigned to me. I still feel so, st still I feel so stuck, stagnant and frustrated. Mm. Now, um, yes, this, I, I understand he has been doing these things. That's what mm. I feel from him. And, and partly that's part of his problem. Mm. Part of his problem is that uh, in the past, the way he's learnt, is by using his intellect and being a dutiful student yeah. and working his way through things quite intellectually. And, and this was taught to him at a very young age, as it has been taught to most, most people in Western society in particular. And so the problem is now that this has become uh, a very ingrained uh, way of learning for him. Mm -hmm. and, and this is a part of the issue that he faces. Yeah. 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 I give, my per I give myself permission to feel whatever it is I need to feel. Intellectually, I don't feel afraid of expressing any emotion, yet I know I must be if I'm not progressing. I know from my experience as a therapist that once I start feeling things that I won't go crazy and that there will be an end to feelings. It doesn't go on and on like most clients erroneously believe. Correct. So here again, he, he has a very good understanding of himself and also a very good understanding of the emotional process in the sense that he, he intellectually doesn't feel that he's afraid of expressing an emotion, mm -hmm. and I agree. Yeah. He, he also knows that he must be afraid emotionally somehow because otherwise he would be progressing, and I agree. Yeah. He also uh, knows from his experience that, that he won't go crazy and it, and it will end if he allows himself to go through it, and I agree. He does know those particular things. So he, he's, ha again, got a very accurate idea of his own state yes yeah which yeah. which by the way is one of the essential things to have <laughs> if you're ever going to make any yeah. progress yeah <laughs> yeah and he's also aware of what not what isn't the problem as well isn't he he yes. knows okay this is a obviously i've got some problem mm -hmm. obviously my intellect and my soul are not matching up here mm -hmm. my feeling state and my intellect but i also know these things aren't issues within me like that like a false belief that emotions will never end or that i won't be able to cope or whatever it is yes. yeah yep. so okay. he's pretty good with all this yeah. he's got a good grasp of what the issues are mm. and as he's correctly stated and this is something we'll discuss with him in a minute is that he obviously must be afraid of emotion of otherwise he would yep. be feeling emotion yeah so there's we've got to help him identify some things there yeah yeah okay i'll read the next one it, in my efforts to feel and release, I saw two different therapists for seven months on a weekly basis, but got nowhere. I believe clients can only go as far as a therapist has gone in their own healing. If therapists haven't done their emotional work, then they won't go very far, very far with clients who want to do their emotional work. Mm -hmm. I agree totally yeah. with that. And in fact, I feel quite strongly that this therapist that he saw were in that condition where they actually weren't in as developed a condition as he was himself. Mm -hmm. So that, that makes it very, very difficult for him to progress beyond where they are yeah. because they're not in the state where they they were more advanced of him emotionally. And their, so their, the, their soul condition is really they have fears about going further would you say that yeah they had i feel they had actually more fears than he has yes. about going further so he him spending time with them actually doesn't help him and if anything it might have him it could hinder him i yeah. doubt whether it has because yeah. i don't feel it has but but it hasn't certainly hasn't helped him yeah um, and i feel quite strongly that therapy uh, there is another comment i'd like to make about therapy and that is a person can only help you in so far as their ability to feel you mm -hmm. and if they cannot feel you then they cannot help you mm -hmm. and and these therapists obviously cannot feel him so therefore they cannot help him 
And, and this is a problem where most people go to a therapist wanting assistance and the therapist is guessing based on uh, what's being told to them, what's going on. And a lot of times, like he says, has not done their personal emotional work, but also is attempting to guess from what they're being told what the problem is, yeah. rather than actually feeling the person and accurately being able to sense what the problem actually is. Yeah. 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 Yep. Okay. Uh, then he says, um, I've even tried hypnosis <laughs> in an effort to get through my blockages, but it was of no use. And I'm, I'm, I could say to him, fortunately, <laughs> yeah. because um, most people who see a therapist to do hypnosis end up feeling overcloaked by the spirits that come through them in hypnosis. Mm. And because of, of Thomas's um, sincerity, that did not occur. Yeah. And so that was great yeah. uh, that it didn't occur, but of course, like he says, it didn't help him get through his blockages mm. either. And I agree, it will not help you get through your blockages either. Hypnose hypnotherapy and any seeming advantage from hypnotherapy, hypnotherapy often comes from actual spirits mm. uh, channeling their emotions through the individual anyway. Mm. Mm -hmm. And so it would not be advantageous to carry on with it. And, and really hypnosis is often um, designed with the premise to help get over emotional blockages and, and really there's no way you can actually do that well, it's unless very much, you do the work that Thomas... Yeah, it's very much governed by the spirits and the person who's doing the hypnotherapy and their desires for the person. Yeah. And most hypnotherapists want the person to be over things yeah. and most spirits want the person to express their emotions. Yeah. So usually you get a combination of those two things, both of which Thomas wouldn't hook into. Yes. So of course he would get no benefit whatsoever yeah. from hypnotherapy. Yeah. Yeah. Mind you, other people would go and they'd have a completely different experience, but it would still be of no benefit yes. because of the different addiction that are in place with hypnotherapy mm -hmm. so he says yes I've yelled and screamed <laughs> and beat pillows with tennis rackets but it was to, to, of no avail I quit therapy because it just became an interesting conversation every, each week I desired more and this is a wonderful thing I feel about him too is that he wants to progress towards God there is a desire there mm -hmm. it's not uh, you know it is a sincere desire and passion to grow it's not just because it you know it's easy or something like that he, he's a very sincere man yeah. yeah he says i've listened to the entire human soul series and the emotion feeling series now that's a lot of videos so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's quite a lot of material <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, finally i decided to go to my boyhood home and neighborhood in chicago in the hopes it would trigger feelings that have long been suppressed i drove i drove round trip that day from minneapolis to Chicago, 1,300 kilometres, and spent three hours walking my neighbourhood, seeing my house, I lived there from four to ten years old, and visiting my old schools. I journaled and had some profound insights, but I felt nothing. I was numb. I had so hoped something would trigger me there that would evoke some kind of emotional expression or release, that I would cry or sob that I would yell and scream and get angry, that I would grieve or feel something, anything. <laughs> I desire oneness with God, but nothing ever changes. I continue to feel nothing. You say my will is suppressing, and that frustrates me because it has to be true, but I don't want it to be. <laughs> Please help me to feel and move forward, Thomas. Yes. Well, Thomas, yeah, wonderful letter, mate. And uh, to be honest, uh, I'm so happy that you sent the letter so we can discuss it. And just to make a general comment, I do feel there are a group of people out there who are listening to Divine Truth who do, who do have some sincerity and find themselves in this place where they just feel stuck emotionally, don't they? Yeah, and they're honest and, about and it. And they're honest. Yeah. And so we're raising Thomas's letter because it's just a lovely letter and he's very yeah. sincere and we'd like to assist him, but also that... We feel it could assist a lot of other people. Definitely. So it's also great, Thomas, that you wrote to us yes. for that reason. Yeah. yeah. So let's get around to giving <laughs> him some answers. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, yes. So, so firstly, I feel he's at the phase where he's um, in the difficult phase of attempting to have an emotional breakthrough. He's already gone through a lot of intellectual information and things, and he's worked his way through intellectually having awareness he is now very aware of his personal state mm -hmm. he can feel how blocked he is which is and it is frustrating yeah it's a terribly frustrating thing once you get to that point you realize that i'm blocked and i don't even know 
well, like how to get how to get out of this state. Yeah. It's a very hard uh, hard thing to do. But one thing, Thomas, the first thing is that you do have a fair bit of judgment of yourself, mm. and this is one thing that is preventing you from making this emotional breakthrough, you're being pretty hard on yourself. You're not recognising, firstly, how much progress you've already made. Right, so he, that's he, number one. So that's number one. Yeah. He, he, he needs to be allow himself to, to see the progress, even though a lot of it has been intellectual. He's, he's gone through an intellectual deconstruction process of his facade. And, and as a result, he is now telling me exactly what I feel from him. Mm. And as I said, that is a very rare thing to have a conversation with a person and they're telling me exactly what <laughs> I'm feeling from yeah. them. Um, there's not many people that that happens a at all. Mm -hmm. so, so this means that he's done a lot of work already. Yeah. And um, I, I feel he needs to honour that work that he's done mm -hmm. right? and, and realise that his guides and, and God are very happy that he's gone through that work and they're nowhere near as disappointed with him as what he is he's in himself. himself. Yeah. Right. And I understand the frustration of making the breakthrough into the emotion is difficult and particularly when you have no idea what the emotion is but, but you do need to honour more the fact that you've done a lot of work already and you would not even be at this state if it was not for the work you had already done. And you are also in a state where you are accurately seeing, perhaps in a lot of ways for the first time in his life, accurately seeing how blocked the emotions actually are. Mm -hmm. And this is a very rare thing for, for people who email us to actually accurately see these particular things. Yes, yeah, so he's not, he's not prone to getting into some kind of addictive facade based crying in order to alleviate his feelings of frustration he's not um telling himself a big story about how you know really he did feel that other thing and it did help him or he knows okay when it comes to my childhood stuff i'm feeling numb i'm feeling like i'm not feeling anything and i don't want to kid myself about that yes. so that's really what you're saying isn't yes it? Yeah. so that's the first thing be loving to yourself <laughs> You can't connect to emotions when you are being unloving to yourself. Yeah. And, and he has a tendency to be unloving to himself because he's demanding more of himself. Yeah. And while it's lovely to have a goal or hope, it's not good for you to demand more of yourself than, you know, without seeing the progress you've already made. Like, from God's perspective, God accurately sees him God isn't, doesn't feel like, oh, Thomas, you're a terrible person because you haven't got it to the next place. And I, I know that that partly is what Thomas is feeling about himself. So yeah. um, it's really good if he can let go of that and allow himself to see the progress he's already made. Because he's not, he's not accurately measuring the progress he's already made. Mm. He thinks it's very little mm -hmm. when it's actually quite substantial. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So that's the first thing. The second thing is that um, he needs to start now where he is and where he is, is frustrated. Mm. Now frustration is the beginning of anger. Mm. And this is, uh, he, it, however, he is being frustrated with himself, yeah. right? He needs to allow himself just to feel frustrated that he's not connecting emotionally to himself. Now, all of our frustrations begin because of different things, like he correctly identifies, mostly because of fear. Mm -hmm. So there is obviously quite a large fear, childhood-based, yeah. relating to connecting emotionally. Now, the only ways that I've been able to get through those kind of things is to do a number of things. Firstly, um, there's a number of practical things, I suppose you could say. Firstly, allow yourself to connect to your body and feel its aches and pains. Now, if he doesn't feel that there are many aches and pains, um, my suggestion is he's quite detuned from his body mm -hmm. and we need to help him get in tune with his body. Mm -hmm. Now, rather than going to therapist for seven months, yeah. he would have been better paying the same money and going to a massage, therapist, a deep yeah. tissue massage therapist yeah. for seven months. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because he would have then been able to feel where the aches and pains and the different discomforts are in his body. So that will help him mm -hmm. have some awareness. So this, 
What the process is now is that he's going to allow himself to become both intellectually and emotionally aware of what blockages, what the what the blockages are that stop him from feeling, mm. right? Now, there's usually only two or three, actually. Yeah. Usually, it's shame, guilt, which also incorporates the you know feeling of guilt, mm -hmm. anger, or fear. Yeah. And shame is a form of fear, but but it, it's in itself quite unique, so we can separate it. But shame, anger, or fear. Three emotions that, at some level, you do not wish to feel, mm -hmm. right? So that's, that's the start. You need to find what it is you don't wish to feel <laughs> and why it is you don't wish to feel. Yeah. Right. If I could add there, um, you were mentioning about, firstly, you were mentioning about how Thomas has been quite hard on himself. Yeah. Which is a judgment emotion. It's a judgment. Which is a negative emotion towards himself, yeah. which is going to suppress emotion. Exactly. Yeah. And sometimes in my working through issues, I've found that um, that terrible judgment, I've felt, I've felt very similar to Thomas mm. many times. Mm. And I have too. Yeah. Mm. Um, I found that the judgment, it's sort of like I'm treating, there is a hurt child if you want to put it in those kind of terms inside of me who I'm who I'm really beating up on for not feeling something and if I imagine doing that to a child in front of me that child's not going to feel anything because I'm beating up on it and saying you've got to feel you've got to feel you've got to feel the poor mm. things terrified poor thing's going to be sitting yeah. there terrified not knowing what to do <laughs> yeah so that was that's the first the stumbling block I realized hang on I, I'm not I'm not loving myself which is the first thing you said to Thomas and then when you spoke about the shame, shame, guilt kind of scenario or anger or fear about feeling emotions, I've often found as well that it's that I'm, I'm so resistive to even acknowledging that I have one of those feelings. It's not even that I'm, I don't want to feel those feelings, it's that I'm so afraid really of feeling the truth about how I feel this childlike part of me that I'm even afraid to even acknowledge that I'm either ashamed or guilty or afraid or angry. And I often find I start to feel again once I'm willing to, to ponder, okay, which one of these things is it that I'm, that I don't want to know about myself right now in relation to whatever the issue is. Mm. Yeah. 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 So my suggestion there is, um, and by the way, this, we want to make a number of suggestions, so these yeah. are just a few of them. My suggestion there is that he needs to understand that yes, he is in fear, emotional fear it is. It's not, it's not intellectual fear, it's emotional fear. And the emotional fear is probably one of the first feelings he's going to have to let himself feel. Now my experience with emotional fear is that it takes quite some time of alone time mm -hmm. to feel. And I can feel quite strongly that Thomas has very little alone time in his life. He's got a very busy life. Right. And he hasn't, there's a, you know, uh, my understanding is he has quite a lot of people around him. And, um, and my feelings are that he, he needs to give himself more alone time, mm -hmm. and particularly alone time where he can just lay in his bed or, or whatever in a place where, where, where it's quiet and there's no external noise and pressure and he can just breathe diaphragmatically breathe into his his diaphragm so into his tummy basically and breathe very very deeply into his tummy and just allow himself to feel and particularly allow himself to recognize that he must be afraid and allow himself to just as he's breathing just say, i must be afraid just allow himself to breathe diaphragmatically into his diaphragm all like all the time when he's there laying down now it took me many months of doing that before i often would have a breakthrough and actually begin to feel some things and you've got to be quite patient with it because because the reality is most of us in western society has been brought up from a very very young age to suppress our emotions uh, and in fact our parents and i suggest thomas's parents fall into this category have spent a large amount of their time attempting to suppress Mm -hmm. ourselves as children and or attempting to selectively oppress us as children. Thomas's childhood I feel is like that. He, he, his parents selectively oppressed him 
And what I mean by that is that they suppressed emotions that they viewed as negative, of which sadness and fear and shame and other similar emotions were in that list for them. And they, they heavily pro projected at him if it, or emotionally felt things towards him whenever he got into that state as a child. And he learned very, very rapidly that the best way to resolve any issue is intellectually. Yeah. And he's going to have to, at some point, accept some truth about his parental situation. And this is one thing that he is refusing to do. Mm -hmm. He's trying to see it all as his problem as his fault mm -hmm. as to the reason why he can't get into his emotional condition, you know, into mm -hmm. the true state. And he doesn't actually clearly see what his parents' faults are and what they projected him all of his growing up life. And so you're saying that even if Thomas does have some intellectual reasoning about, oh, my parents must have been perfect or there, there was this dynamic, you're saying that from an emotional perspective, he's still resisting feeling the truth. He still blames himself he's for it. Emotionally, no matter what he thinks, mm -hmm. he still feels, this is my fault, I'm the problem. Yes. And I've got to sort it and out. And his parents have actually, if he reflects upon his life in the past, he'll see that his parents, while they might not have said that to him, have certainly emotionally stated that to him yeah. through their interaction with him. Yeah. And, and his parents have never, in, in, from what I can feel of them, taken personal responsibility for um, any emotion that their child felt. Mm -hmm. And in fact, his parents basically were concerned about every emotion he felt and therefore projected quite a lot of, f of their own fear at him about feeling emotion. Yeah. And this is one reason why he actually became a therapist, mm -hmm. um, because he, he wanted to help people, but also because he had this, fe you know, this feeling that there's something missing in him that he was hoping to get through discussion of emotional situations. And, uh, and so he was attracted to therapy because he wants to connect emotionally and, that, and that's why there is such a sincere desire in him to connect emotionally yeah. but he doesn't realize how much damage his parents have done to him in suppressing his emotional condition yes yeah. and and they um the projections are still coming from them mm -hmm. whether they've passed or alive i i can't tell the difference most of the time yeah, yeah. Um, but they're still projecting at him yeah. the same kind of emotions which is one and and actually what I can feel from his, you know, from his life, he has quite a number of people in his life that are projecting these things at him because he was attracted to those people because of his parents and how they raised him. Yeah. And he's not being uh, very easy on himself about it. He, he sort of sees his lack of emotional connection to himself as a problem that is only constructed by himself, and that is not true. It has been constructed by, firstly, his parents, and then since then the attractions in his life have all been mostly people who want to do the same thing and that is suppress emotion rather than feel it mm. and and so as a result he is uh, he's quite addicted to pleasing uh, his parents projection of emotion in other words doing doing what they suggest to him is a very big emotional desire and even to the point where he, desi he doesn't desire to see their true nature or condition. Mm. So, so he's, he's actually not telling himself the truth about his parents' true con soul condition, condition and their projections at him. He needs to be more truthful about that. Yeah. And you're also saying that he has now attracted a bunch of people into his life who project the same kind of things that his parents yes. have projected at him. And he's very involved in pleasing those kinds of people still it, it, as a kind of... He's not a person, a people pleaser he, he, uh, per se. Yep. He's, a per, he's the kind of person who basically feels more... Uh, um, there's, there's a whole heap of emotions coming at him that he should suppress his own emotions mm -hmm. at, by default. Yep. And, and he is not seeing the intensity of the projections at him, but rather he feels his own shutdown as a result of his own lack of or ability to get into his own emotional condition. So he's not, he's not seeing that actually part, a large part 
of the reason why he's not able to get into his emotions is because he's surrounded by people who don't really want to see him in his emotions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you see? Yes. And, and as a result of that, he, he, and he doesn't accurately see them doing that. Because they're friendly enough people and kind enough people, he doesn't see them as actually being quite damaging to his emotional condition. Mm -hmm. he, he blames himself rather than seeing that actually there's a lot more going on than just his own resistance. Yes. Does that make sense? Yeah, so you're saying he's not yet become sensitive emotionally to the truth of how his parents projected at him mm -hmm. and as a result he's not sensitive emotionally to what the people in his life now are projecting at him Correct. around his emotional state. Correct. Yeah. There's quite a lot of heavy projections at him. He doesn't have much support to go through anything emotionally from an emotional perspective. Yeah. They give it lip service. They yeah. say, you know, sure, you need to do it, you yeah. know. And he's learnt enough about it now that he knows he needs to do it. But, uh, uh, but they don't support him emotionally doing it. Yes. Right, which is a very big difference. And it's the emotional... The, the child is always connected to the emotional feeling mm -hmm. that he's getting from his environment. Yeah. And so this inner child, if you like, who needs to express himself both mm -hmm. with some anger and sadness and shame and fear and all these other emotions, this, the inner child that he's having difficulty accessing, accessing. Yeah. Is, is feeling from its current environment, don't do this, don't mm. do this, don't do this. And no matter what everyone in his current environment is saying, that's what they're projecting or feeling. Yeah. And he's feeling that, and he's quite sensitive to other people's feelings. feelings. And as a result, he feels that he's got to do what they say, and he's quite afraid of actually breaking through that. Now, part of breaking through that is coming to understand the truth. And the truth is, no, these people are actually projecting quite harsh emotions at you, Thomas, the people in your life. And I think you're aware of some of the people, when I say it, I, I can list some of them off for you, but I'd pr pr perhaps rather that he has to think about it himself. Yeah. But there's very people very close to him in his life that are projecting at him quite harshly yeah. that he should not go into his emotions or that he's allowed to do it at certain times or under certain control yeah. conditions. Um, he, you know, they feel that he, even the stuff that he's done up to now in an attempt to get to his emotions is already going too far. Mm. They already believe that. Mm. And, um, and they, they, he is receiving quite a large amount of projections from these people, mm. which, which is, and because of his feeling that he's got to, in some way, emotionally please them, or his fear in particular that if he doesn't do what they say that, and if things go bad, then he'll have no support system, yeah. then um, he's willing to bend what he knows he needs to do to suit their particular desires. Design. And this is one reason why he took a trip, 1,300 kilometres, in, in one day to go to Chicago, from, from Minneapolis to Chicago, and, uh, and only spent three hours walking around and, and had a few realizations and everything, but he didn't spend a week there or a couple yeah. of weeks there. Yeah. Right. The main reason why he didn't do that is because of these external projections at him that he's already going too far by making the trip. <laughs> he doesn't need yeah. to do that. Yes. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I felt that he put a lot of pressure on himself in that scenario and even... But he's putting pressure on put himself because of the pressure that he's feeling from, from in his, his environment. his environment, yeah. Right, that's partly the reason why he's putting yeah. pressure on himself. Yeah. He's feeling all this pressure from the environment and then he feels, well, he's got to hurry up and get over it. So, th so yeah. that, do you see? And, and, that, and that's not going to work that way. He's not going to have the breakthrough under those circumstances mm. he needs to create a soul space yep. for himself to feel and at the moment the soul sp the space around him is full of of feeling that he should be over anything that he should be over and they don't even really understand his desire for God at this point no I, I think everyone pretty much close to him does not understand his desire for God at this point and he has quite a strong desire for God yeah and nobody around him really gets it mm. as to why and they all think he's a bit crazy having it and yeah. they just really want him to get over it and get on with things yeah. and uh, so so it's fantastic that he's done what he's done even under all of this pressure that I feel yeah. surrounds him yeah. yeah yeah the other thing that he needs to do I feel is give himself time to pray and um, I don't, the feeling I get from you, Thomas, is that uh, 
that you do pray sometimes, but you almost feel the feeling I get from you at times when you talk, and particularly the two letters that I've gotten from you, is that is that um, you almost view God as somebody who wants you to get over everything and move on with your life as well as the mm. people. You know, it's like it's like he's taken on this viewpoint of God from his from his ch childhood yeah. from yeah. his parents and almost projected that at God. And so he sort of has this feeling towards God that, that, he, that he has to be good for God mm. before God will love him. Mm. And that's not true. Like, I feel quite strongly that if Thomas sincerely prayed every day and just allowed himself to, to be loved by God, right, at the moment he blocks love. He, he's willing to love other people. He's quite loving to other people, in fact. Mm. But he blocks the entry of love into himself from other people and in fact there are not too many other people around him who truly love him and so so he's not really experienced somebody really loving and caring for him mm. and so he's quite blocked to receiving god's love and if he could allow himself to pray every day about allowing the reception of god's love into his soul and exposing you know getting help from his guides and from god just praying every day, longing for advice about what it is that stops him from receiving God's love. Because he does have a desire for God, but he doesn't allow God's love to enter him. Mm. And my feelings are that he has a tendency to not allow anybody's love really to enter him. He's, yeah. um, he, he's quite... Um, like he feels he has to earn their love mm. and as a res as a result a lot of people care for him but but a lot of people only care for him because of what he gives them it's yes. not a real love where he's receiving without anybody without him having to do anything to receive it's not unconditional it's not unconditional regard. Yeah. yeah yeah he's not had any real experience with unconditional love all of his life yeah yeah and in fact, that's one of these reasons why he's struggling is because he's not, he, he, can, he thinks that it's going to be loved the same way that other people love him and mm. it's going to be completely different. Mm. And he's not allowing God's feelings for him to enter him. Um, he's, he's only, he only will allow God's feelings to enter if he feels, if he feels yep. that he's done the right thing by God yep. for it to happen. Yep. And, yep. and so I feel... Thomas, that you need to pray more all day, every day you can pray, you know, from your heart. And uh, initially you're going to be quite frustrated doing this because you're not going to feel anything into you. But eventually there'll be law of attraction events that occur around you that will help expose to you the, the particular reasons why you're not letting love into mm -hmm. you. Another thing, <laughs> if we can go through another thing, is that he is not, he's not, observant enough about the law of attraction mm. around him and mm. what it's bringing him mm -hmm. mm. there's and a lot going on around giving him. him the answers isn't it to yes why it's already giving him the yes. re reasons why he's blocked yeah. he's already getting a lot of assistance his guides and god are both trying to give him a lot of assistance already but he's quite blocked to seeing the uh, these attraction events and he's quite blocked to seeing why they are you know what what their cause is and my suggestion Thomas every day is to rather than spending 20 to 30 minutes a day taking copious notes about what I say <laughs> I would probably like to see you take 20 30 minutes a day and write some copious notes about what you've noticed you attracted during the day yeah. and what that must say mm -hmm. about what you're inside of yourself what you're attracting you know why and why you're attracting it yes he's but, got a powerful intellect yes, that he, he could use in a way to analyze even the events and the interactions he has yes. however he has an emotional tendency to blame, to blame himself, himself rather than see what's really going yes. on and so that's his danger that. yeah so he's got to be very careful mm -hmm. about using that tendency to blame himself for what went on during the day yeah. rather than actually seeing what's going on during the day and in particular allow himself to tune into other people's feelings i personally found that very good to do and and sometimes i could do that better than i could tune into my own and um, but it helped me also see what i was attracting myself so if i felt from another person that they were attacking me i go okay so that means I must be open to the attack. I, you know, they must be getting something out of the attack. 
so firstly, I would notice that I'm surrounded by people who want to harm me, yeah. which is a very important thing to know, mm -hmm. because that means that, you know, that would be one reason why you're finding it hard to feel your feel, own emotions. Yeah. Uh, you know, a child being attacked all day is not going to feel itself. Mm -mm. And so it helps you do that. But it also helps you see that, wow, like there must be something in me that's open to this attack yes. that, that I'm not seeing currently. Yeah. So it helps you analyze things a bit more. And I feel that he's um, like he's very been very interested in divine truth. And I and I don't say to him to not be. It's <laughs> fantastic that he is. But I feel that he's not being observant enough about what God's messenger of truth, yeah. the law of attraction, yeah. is bringing to him yeah. through his soul condition and demonstrating to him. He judges himself as being the problem. Mm -hmm rather than seeing actually that he's quite often or quite frequently being uh, there's quite heavy projections that are coming at him emotions coming at him from other people and and he sort of sees himself as the problem that's yeah. what's caused it and i'm not saying that he has to blame the other people either he just needs to see that actually the people that surround him are not quite as loving and certainly i feel nowhere near as loving as he believes them to be yeah. and and he hasn't asked himself like he, he doesn't accurately see that that stuff's coming at him not necessarily just because of the things that are inside of him but rather also because of the things that are inside of those people yes and um, the people around him sort of see him as somebody that they can use and mm. and uh, to a degree manipulate into getting what they want from him mm -hmm. and he being the loving person that he is um, feels impelled almost to give them everything they want without consideration as to whether what's being demanded of him is actually a loving, is a it's loving a thing. Loving. And in fact, any demand of him is not loving. Mm -hmm. um, so, so he's not even seeing these things as demands. Yeah. You follow? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I feel if he does a combination of those things, but you wanted to add a few. No, you know? no. no. I just if you're finished, <coughs> I've. Um, I'll just. A few summarize everything yeah, that you said yeah. yeah so if we if we summarize thomas's letter he's basically saying look he's he's been at this for three over three years yes he's been studying the divine truth teachings yep. he feels and, he, and he's been doing great to be like yeah. much better than he thinks he has yes right. yes yep. so he's hard on himself about he's too hard he's on going. himself but he feels very blocked to especially to his childhood emotions and he feels and i not agree he is yep. I, I agree totally with that yes he, he however accurately assesses his condition mm -hmm. very rare yeah <laughs> like, this is a very rare thing thomas so you don't yeah. understand how important that is yeah and how at this stage and how very rare it is for us to meet someone like yourself yeah because it is a very rare thing yeah that, to that have that level of self-awareness without yet getting into your emotions yeah yeah so He's close. Would you say he's close? Yeah, no, very close. Yeah. He, he, he just makes, needs to make a few breakthroughs. And the breakthroughs are three, three primary breakthroughs. The breakthrough of truth. He needs yeah. to face more truth yeah. about what the law of attraction is bringing to his life through his condition mm -hmm. and showing him not just about himself, but about the people around him. He's not seeing what it's showing them about the people around him. He's, yeah. he's only, because he's got a tendency to judge himself and be negative towards himself, he's only seeing what he thinks he needs to do. He's not seeing Same. what's actually coming at him. Yeah. So this yeah. is a big problem. Yeah. He's not examining that yes. and seeing that. Yeah. Um, the other big issue was this issue of the judgment that he has about yeah. it all, which is yeah. linked to that as yeah. to why he has this judgment is because he, in his childhood, there's a, there's a lot of very strong emotional pressure delivered to him that causes him now to feel a large deal of emotional judgment towards mm. feeling certain emotions. And there is a definite feeling in him that he's got to get through it urgently. Yeah. He, he's putting pressure on himself because the people around him are putting pressure on him. Yeah. They, they feel he needs to get through it. And thirdly, there needs to be more of a focus on prayer, yeah. praying to God and allowing God's love in. Yeah. He, he's blocked to letting love in. Yeah. He doesn't want to let love in. It will actually overwhelm him quite emotionally when mm -hmm. he does let love in. And, and he, he's blocked to letting love in because he, he's never been loved his entire life, really. It's all been emotional barter, mm, right, yeah. that he's experienced with love in his life. And he's never really let love in as a result. And God's got a pure love for him that he wa wants him to let in. But, but he feels he's got to earn it. He's got to, he's got to do something 
for God. In order to... Yeah, and, and I'm suggesting all he needs to do is lay down for half an hour a day <laughs> and just sincerely oh, long for God's love from his heart. Yes. Long and allow whatever comes up as a result to come up. That's right, because often that brings up all of our false beliefs about even asking, doesn't it? Yeah, and he can even practice that during the day, not laying down. He can just, you know, sitting down for lunch, just allow himself to settle and just long for God's love mm -hmm. to enter his soul from his heart, you mm -hmm. know. And sooner or later, there will be a breakthrough where, where it will be exposed through the attractions, if he's observant of the attractions, it will be exposed to him why he's not letting God's love in. Because yeah. God's love's ready to come in, yeah. and He's ready to receive it. He's yeah. just got some blockages, that emotional blockages, where He doesn't want to face some truths yeah. about His life, yeah. and 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 also doesn't want to face some truth that He actually um, is not being loved when He thinks He is being loved, yeah. and vice versa. Actually, sometimes He feels he He's not being loved yeah. when He is, and yeah. and uh, and so you know He's not able to accurately tell when somebody really loves Him at this point. Yeah. 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 All right. There's a bunch of things that you said in amongst. Th they were your key points. Yes. Would you like me just to run through yeah, the certainly. other pointers that you gave, certainly. Thomas? Certainly. Because um, there's about twelve of them. Yes. So you said firstly, and you've already recapped that, that he needs to recognise the progress that he's already made. Yes. Essential. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Recognise. He's at the exactly. moment judging it so harshly, yeah, and yeah. I'm going, "What? You, you're in, <laughs> you've done a lot of work, mate. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. you don't need to judge it so harshly." Yeah. 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 Okay. Second thing you mentioned was to spend time connecting to his body, feeling his body, tuning into the body sensations. Um, and maybe we, I can give him some pointers there, yeah. just brief pointers. Um, things like breathing diaphragmatically, sitting at work. If he's, I don't know how where how he works. I, I can't picture it yeah. from the other moments. But if he can just where he's working or whether it's at home, he's always trying to breathe into his tummy, always trying to just mm -hmm. breathe into, you know, body, drink a lot of water. Yeah. You know, my suggestion is anything from four to six litres, but get, don't drink the water out of the tap in the USA. <laughs> <laughs> Go and get some water that has low amount of bicarb in it, uh, or bicarbonates in it, and, and, you know, drink four liters a day at least yeah. and you'll find initially you'll find that very hard yeah. to do you, yeah. you'll get to two and after that you'll feel like yeah. you know you're going to the toilet every five minutes and so forth and drink more drink you want to get to four liters a day because water allows emotion to flow yeah it's a very important it's breath and water breath water and movement i find is movement really, exercise yeah allows. And some kind of exercise that forces air into the diaphragm even if it's brief it yes. helps me yeah. quite a bit yeah. yeah like i you know we go for walks every yeah. day but but i also love getting on the trampoline, trampoline. and yeah. uh, just that that really gets the diaphragm going and yeah. let, lets you you know connect to that emotionally yeah and um, the another thing is he needs to allow himself he, he's a very busy life and mm -hmm. he needs to allow himself more time yes to I'm pray getting... time yeah. yeah he needs to give himself quiet time there's a lot of external pressures in his life and he's not he's not taking the time to get there to to the emotion he he needs to be more loving to himself He's not loving himself. His major problem is not mm. loving himself, actually. So he has problems with loving himself and receiving love from others. Yes. You've said that. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So yep. recognize his progress. Feel his body. Yep. Spend more time alone. Yes. Uh, reflecting. And by the way, when he spends more time alone, he'll find the people around him who are demanding things of him become more demanding. And then he'll realize their demands. Yes. He'll see their demands more than he's more seeing clearly. them today. Because the way, what, he, what he feels from them today is he just, it's just an automatic part of his life that he deals with that demand, deals with that demand and so forth. He, he doesn't almost see them as demands. But once he takes a little bit more time from his life and the other person saying, what are you doing? Nothing. Uh, and uh, people around him will start thinking he's doing nothing yeah. um, while he's trying to connect. And uh, that's, he's going to feel the demands then. Yeah. He'll, he'll see the demands then. Yeah, mm. yeah, which will be beneficial. Hey? Yeah. The, another thing you mentioned was um, usually we bl become blocked or are blocked emotionally because we're blocked around one, one or of three or all three em emotions. So anger, shame and guilt or fear yeah. and i mentioned that sometimes even growing just the awareness that we are resisting one of those emotions has mm. helped me to actually break into those emotions yes so just just asking asking himself okay what what is my key emotion that i really 
do not want to feel at yes. this point and, oh, and that and I feel consumed forgot, by really. But I also yeah. forgot the issue of the body again. Massage would yes. help him more yeah. than going than and talking. Therapy. Yeah. Talking, no, you've done that all your life, Thomas. <laughs> yeah. You've got to stop talking <laughs> and yeah. feel and allow yourself to feel get, your body more. Get into this uh, uh, non-intellectual uh, yeah, place. Not, yeah. and, and in fact, you know, if he got some deep tissue massage, he would start to feel the discomforts in his body more and that would be very good for him. Yeah. Uh, my feeling again is that he doesn't like receiving so much, so yeah. he's probably avoided massage a lot of his life. Yeah. Um, I, so. I, and I have an inkling that Thomas might have some f physical difficulties. I'm not sure if that's correct. So uh, it would probably help him to tune into. Often people who've grown up with physical difficulties or who have a chronic condition want to detune continually from their body. Yes, what's very interesting about his letters to us is that he does not say much about his personal health. Mm -hmm. And um, this is a very critical part of what the law of attraction is bringing to him based on the condition. Mm. And he's, he's not mentioned much about at, it at all. Mm -hmm. And he's also not mentioned much about other people in his life no. at all, yeah. in all of his letters. And the reason why he hasn't done this is because there's the same reason really. Yeah. One is that he doesn't want to see the relationships yeah. of what's going on between his physical health and what's happening in his life. Yeah. But secondly, he doesn't want to feel the people around him or what they're you know, emotionally putting onto his life. Mm -hmm. and, and I feel it's very important he does both of those both things. Of those he needs things. to be, as I said, a lot more truthful about those things yes. in his life. Yes, so we've mentioned breathing. Then you talked about accepting the truth emotionally about his parents' projections at him. Yes, and the projections and of others. And following that, the, the projections of the people in his life currently yes. and what they're like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, okay. From what I can feel, they're quite intensely projecting at him emotions that he has become so used to absorbing that he barely notices it at all. Yes, and one of the key things you said there was that you feel that most people around him are projecting at him to shut down emotionally. Yes. So that very specific projection towards him. Yes, that he's got to get through this phase he's in, is the, yeah. the way they see it. There's, that he's in a phase, you know, the whole Jesus thing's a phase as well, isn't it? And, uh, and he's, he's in this phase and... You know, some of the people around him are concerned for him being yeah. in this phase, but but they're not voicing this concern in a in a grown up way. They're just projecting at him emotionally that he yeah. needs to get through it and yeah. get over it and yeah. get on with it. Yeah. And because of that, he has a strong uh, feeling that he's got to rush his way through it. Yes, and get beyond it. And um, and I feel to mention here as well that even if they're not physic, there are definitely spirits around him projecting this at him constantly. Yes, he's um, open to it. He's open to that. But uh, yes. he, he, it is also his parents. Yes, that he's open to it from them yeah. in particular. Yeah. And yeah. Um, you know that there is a very very strong demand from people surrounding him that he shut down himself and his desires, do what they want. He can do what he wants as long as they've already, he's already done, <laughs> done what, what they, they want. want. <laughs> yeah, no, it's yeah. terrible. It's a terrible, yeah. oppressive thing. Yeah. Okay, you've mentioned time for prayer and working on his blocks to, to receiving love yes. into, into his heart. Yes, again. Yeah. He, he's quite hard on himself, but he's also, he also is quite hard. Other people are quite hard on him, mm. but, but he's also quite hard in, in his way or viewpoint of God in some ways, like... He sort of, because he's so hard on himself, he also feels that God's hard on him too. God has a standard he has to reach before he's going to be worthy yeah. and things like that. Yeah. And, and honestly, Thomas is ready to receive love. Yeah. It's just a matter of his, uh, his, his uh, working through the emotional reasons why he's blocking it from mm. flowing. Mm. And, and I suppose this is something we need to mention at this yeah. phase is that there are two layers, I suppose you could say, of emotion. And these are the only two layers of emotion that I generally focus on myself. Mm -hmm. There's the emotion at the base, which is the, all of the emotion that's unhealed, that's all usually sadness mm -hmm. or what you could relate as causal emotion. Mm -hmm. And once you get to that, uh, you, you will just naturally feel it. Mm -hmm. Just like a child when it hits itself, 
it naturally cries. It doesn't ask itself, is, is my parents around? Yeah. Uh, you know, no, I can't cry then. And, yeah. and it, don't, it just automatically cries yeah. unless it's been suppressed. Already, yeah. Already. And then there's the suppressing emotions, the controlling, the blo what I would call the blockages, mm -hmm. the blockages to feeling the causal yeah. emotion. They are the difficult emotions to get through. Yeah. And they are the ones I focus most of my attention on. Yeah. And uh, when it, for myself personally. And I can identify those emotions through law of attraction events. In other words, God's messenger of truth, the law of attraction, bringing me events that show me that I must be suppressing some emotion. I focus on prayer mm. to help me identify the block. So there's times when you have no idea what they are, no yeah. idea. That, you know, I'm working through some at the moment. They were formed well before I arrived on the planet this time around. And, and I've really, I'm starting to get inkling now, but I've yeah. spent a good solid two years having no idea, yeah. really. And, and I've had to be patient and loving with myself mm -hmm. all through that phase, even with all the other people's projections as why doesn't he get on with it and yeah. what's going on and, you yeah. know, yeah, he's, see, he's, not, he's going downhill and all those other projections all happening, all the worry and all the other things that go on. You still have to be loving with yourself in amongst all that and allow yourself to feel that. And, and these are the blockage emotions that mm -hmm. he needs to allow himself to feel. Yeah. Now these blockage emotions, truth is the thing that exposes them, yes. facing the truth. Yes. Now it's not facing the truth about his personal condition yeah. necessarily. It's facing the truth about what was projected at him yeah. in his childhood. So, which will help identify his person. Yeah, condition. so what, what <coughs> created this feeling of numbness or stagnation Correct. internally, what he said at the beginning... Always came from an external source. Yes. It's always an external source. Yes. Yeah. And, and he needs to... He, my feeling is at the moment he's, he, he doesn't like to think badly of other people. Yeah. He, he, so he has a tendency instead to think badly of himself yeah. and think everyone else is innocent. Yes. And the reality is, in his childhood, he got shut down emotionally from people external to himself. Mm. His caretakers shut him down yeah. and he needs to see that they have. And even if he examines them now, he will actually come to see how shut down they actually are. Mm -hmm. And he needs to be more reflective about that. That's the pressure that's on him. Yeah. That, that's one of the reasons why he's struggling to yeah. get into his emotion because he's got all this pressure and then he, in addition to receiving this pressure, puts a whole heap of pressure on himself yeah. rather than going, wow, this pressure is pretty intense, I need to get away <laughs> from it for a bit so yeah. that I can feel myself. Yeah. Uh, he stays in the environment yeah. uh, thinking that it's all his fault, mm -hmm. that he should be able to get beyond it while he's receiving all of these projections and pressure. Yeah, mm. yeah. Which is which is pretty harsh. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. yeah. He needs to be a lot more loving to himself there and see the truth. Yeah. The truth is a wonderful thing to see, but it will confront some of his concepts of what a nice person is. Because the reality is I see people's negative qualities just as much as I see their good ones. Mm -hmm. And a person who's truthful does that. So he won't instead, at the moment he's got a tendency to look at the people around him with rose-coloured glasses, yeah. thinking that everything's fine, mm -hmm. when actually the emotions coming from them are actually quite damaging to his growth. Yeah. 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 And so. he may need to actually take action about that. Yep. Because I feel he's avoiding taking action about that. Mm -hmm. What he does is he conforms to their emotion to their projection of emotion. Yeah. And if their demand is you get over this today or you just got two days to do that, you go and do that, he gives himself two days. Yeah. He, he does what he's allowed to do. Mm. And that's not the way to get into your emotion. You need to do what you need to do, yeah, yeah. not what you're allowed by others to do. Yes. If I waited for others to allow me to go through a process, not a single, I would still be in the same state I was, you know, 20 years ago. Yeah. And not a single person wanted me to go through this process. Yes. Not a single person yeah. I know in my entire life yeah. wanted me to go through this process. So if you only do what you're allowed to do, you probably are not going to get very far <laughs> with your emotions. <laughs> oh, isn't yeah. that the truth? Yeah. 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 We got into this state because we were disallowed yes. in our childhood to have our own experience. And yes. so uh, if we keep waiting for that permission, 
from the very people who disallowed it in the first place. It's, oh, it's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And usually afterwards we attracted a number of people around us after that who are the same as the first people who disallowed us yeah. from going through things emotionally. Yeah. So, you know, we get married and she and the wife won't let me go through it. You know, we have a good, some good friends and they all won't let me go through it. And every time I try to get close to it, I get criticised or laughed at or ridiculed or, you know, everyone thinks, everyone thinks I'm a bit nuts or whatever. Yeah. Or I have to become a loner in order to go through it. And, yeah. and these are sad facts about the world we live in. It, it's not geared towards allowing a person to be childlike in the expression of their emotions. No. Yeah. yeah very true. Yeah. Well, Thomas, <laughs> hope that helped. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe, Thomas... My feelings are if you can allow yourself to do some of those things, I'm pretty sure you'll get to your emotions. But I do feel that you need to be patient with yourself mm. and, and a lot less critical of yourself. You've done a lot of good work and, and, and to be frank with you, hardly any people we know have done that work of becoming real like you have. And you are, have a very accurate uh, concept of your own condition. I, I just don't feel you have a very accurate concept of the condition of people around you and what you're receiving from them, and that often prevents you from feeling things emotionally. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So good luck with that. I hope you go really well with yeah, that. Yeah, we, we look forward to meeting you, Thomas, because you're one of the very few people that we've found to have a sincere <laughs> letter to us, and uh, it's such a refreshing thing to receive a letter where we feel that the person's actual emotional condition is exactly what they're stating to us. So good luck with those things. And if you need some more help, just email us again, and I'm sure we'll try and have another session for you. <laughs>